Hi, my name is John Garfield. This is the Releasing Kings newsletter. It's April 30th, 2017. This week I want to talk to you about partnering with the King of Kings. This is an emphasis that uh, is not new, um, but it's really important. It's something the Lord is emphasizing right now. So we never outgrow the need for encouragement, and we all really do long for fathers. Our hearts are designed to cherish a father and also to be a father. It's uh, pastoral, but once we feel a call into our own destiny, that relationship is better described as apostolic. Our fathering instincts work best when we focus on pulling other people into their hearts. And here's what I've experienced, is that when you sort of prophetically tap into how other people are designed, what makes them tick, and, and pull them into the Lord's design for their life, they love you. <laughs> That's something most people have not experienced. And uh, it's, uh, it's a dynamic that just uh, causes hearts to ignite when we as individuals, you know, touch the DNA that God wrote in our hearts. That's exciting. So understanding, uh, I've got four basic stages that, I'm, that I want to walk through uh, today uh, from two verses of Scripture, Ephesians 1.17 and Philippians 3.10. And there's a great graphic in the newsletter. All the, the, this is all written out at releasingkings.com. If you look at the newsletter uh, tab, you'll see the, the, the latest one. This one will be dated April 30th. So Ephesians 1.17, I keep asking the, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. So this idea of revelation and wisdom are two aspects of our relationship with God. And then Ephesians 3.10 says, I want to, want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So uh, fellowship of suffering and the power of his resurrection are sort of the third and fourth step. So there's a graphic in the newsletter that uh, simplifies this. So the first step is uh, the spirit of revelation is when we are new in the Lord, we, the first thing we learn is to know Jesus as Lord and to learn obedience. So the experience of hearing his voice through his word and, and his spirit is sort of where it starts for all of us. And we have a prophetic sense of what is in his heart and how we can flow with him. And our language is usually obedience to Jesus as Lord. We experience the majesty and the power of God, and we learn to surrender our carnality and trade for his kingdom. There's a, uh, an, an excitement about uh, being involved in what God has for us. So we see ourselves as sinners overcoming sin and serving a God who controls our destiny. Those are sort of the ingredients. So at this stage, we perceive him as our Redeemer, our Lord, and our Protector, we don't really expect anything to go wrong. <laughs> and as followers learning, trying to learn obedience, we usually align ourselves with other believers and we work with them via serving in a church or sort of connecting with an apostolic father who has a mandate that maybe we're attracted to. So that's sort of how it works when we start. So the spirit of wisdom is sort of the, the stage of stepping into the kingdom. So as we continue to develop our ability to hear God, our personal book begins to unfold, and we get puzzle pieces of our own kingdom calling. And the trademark of entering the kingdom is initiative. I mean, we go out and we step out and do something. So kingdom, God, God writes his desires on our hearts and waits for us to volunteer for our role. And we move from servant to friend to king uh, and begin to partner with him to translate his heart and our heart into vocations, into ministries, mountains, families, and cash flow. Obedience doesn't describe maturity at this stage. Now, waiting to be told what to do is too is much too passive to work in the kingdom. It's it's a place we all start, but when we get the sense of our own calling in the kingdom, it takes a step of initiative to make that dream come true. It doesn't fall out of heaven. Doesn't it's not magic. Uh, God, you know, opens doors for us, works with us, partners with us. Uh, there's nothing missing in the relationship. It's a much closer relationship, but it's a different kind of a relationship. So um, wisdom is a conversation premised on understanding our role and loving it. Pursuing our heart's desire feels exactly like the opportunity for our dream to come true. And the secret of kingdom is that it's God's dream too. Our dream is not different than his. So we are walking out the desires that he wrote in our heart 
and owning the role in the kingdom to bless nations and people. And we understand his heart and what he desires. He's, he's interested in us taking the talents he's given us and multiplying them. But exactly how to do that is left up to us. He went on a jury journey and we're offering our lives uh, to navigate the risks that go with life, that go with relationships, and that go with spiritual warfare. And we do that for the joy set before us and the fruit that we envision as a result of being part of his kingdom. So, um, Matthew 5, 20, um, 25, verse 14. Again, it will be like a man going on a jury who call, journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his ability. And then he went on a journey. <laughs> so this idea that God, you know, helicopters in and solves every problem, gives us insight on exactly what to do, tells us... Uh, you know, exactly what to do. It doesn't work in the kingdom. It just doesn't work that way. I'm sorry. So the next step, uh, and, and let me add this to that, to that second step of entering into uh, wisdom, stepping into your initiative and kingdom. Before you do that, you have to realize that not everything may not work. <laughs> okay? Everything doesn't work. Everything that God tries to do doesn't work either. So if you volunteer and say, I want, I want to be your ambassador I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with you. I'm going to partner with you. Realize that you're going to share in the fellowship of his suffering because everything doesn't turn out rosy in the kingdom all the time. Okay, So the price tag for co-laboring with the Father in the kingdom is that sovereignty doesn't mean he controls everything. He controls everything he wants to. Kingdom is not about us. We become instrumental in much larger victories, exploits, battles, setbacks, failures, and delays. And although God isn't orchestrating events just to test us, we are tested by them. Specifically, what gets tested is our understanding of what's in our book. So God writes something in our DNA. We get this understanding of what it is. And then there is no getting around the fact that that word gets tested. Okay, by life circumstances, not like God's trying to crack us, you know, it's not um, he's scheming against us, he's not, it's just that <clears throat> warfare tests the word that's in our hearts. So, um, listen to Psalm 18, verse 30, as for God, his way is blameless, it's not his fault, the word of the Lord is tried, and he is a shield to all who take refuge in him, um, and Concerning Joseph, Psalm 105, verse 18, he, they afflicted, afflicted his feet with fetters. He himself was laid in irons until the time that his word came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. So that doesn't mean God was testing him. It means his ability to believe and persevere and pursue the thing that God put in his heart was being tested. Okay, So some don't survive this stage, to be honest with you. And to... And we adopt a theology that goes something like this. I stepped out an initiative. I thought it was God. It was really presumption. It must have been. And it didn't work. Disaster struck. And from now on, I'm just doing what the Father tells me. Nothing more. <laughs> I'm going to be safe. <laughs> so that vow translates to abandoning the desires that God wrote in our hearts and shrinking away from both initiative and responsibility, which are two keys to the kingdom. I might add. <laughs> so it sets us up to become victims of passivity and delayed or forfeited destiny. Okay, uh, It's a belief that God must be a hard man who asks us to do what, he, what we think he should take care of instead of working through his sons. So we hide our talent because we're afraid something might go wrong, uh, the next disaster. And uh, that verse is in Matthew 5, verse 24 and 25. So let me talk about resurrection. Here's the problem with experiencing a resurrection. <laughs> its predecessor is a death. And it's never pleasant to see our dream crushed, whether it's uh, physical uh, ailments, financial disasters, relational or vocational. It's, it always hurts and it always feels totally helpless like God abandoned us. But that's exactly where God uh, wants us. We all have to experience that. Um, the dream we, uh, we cannot accomplish in our own strength and wisdom, he eventually resurrects from the ashes. And it's our ability to persevere 
knowing that he's going to do that, knowing that what he put in our hearts is really true and we can be faithful toward that and continue to pursue it even in difficult seasons. That's the, the genius of knowing the power of his resurrection. Um, so the, <clears throat> the, revel, the, the revelation of resurrection is that he is not taking away the desires of our hearts, nor is he abandoning us. Our Father's expectation is that we're, we're faithful to our original path no matter what, what giant we face, what setback happens, or what defeat we face. As believers, we are not insulated from disasters. When the ship sinks, believers float. Um, death and resurrection is the birthplace of multiplication and fruit. So John 12, 24 and 25, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So when we come out of the fire and the resurrection, we face the revelation that our Father has always been present and the call on our life is still intact and nothing has changed in our book and our next assignment is to press into the kingdom purpose. And our relationship sh shifts from knowing the Lord who tells us what to do to knowing the Father who partners and promotes His sons to kings. It's a different kind of a relationship, and it's very important to understand that uh, for kingdom and to walk in it, to experience it, to know how much our Father loves us. He's not just a general passing out orders. So there's a fragrance that goes with this. There's something that happens in our hearts when we experience this. Um, so... It's a, a brokenness, a, a faithfulness, a multiplication, and the spirit of a father. Once you've tasted this, um, you can help other people survive it. And that's the genius of knowing these four stages uh, of, of maturity. Um, so the father, uh, we, we know the heart of our father. We know our call, and we're not surprised by anything life throws at us. And we expect to survive and prosper somehow. Because we know the power of Jesus' resurrection that operates in us. We know he dwells in our hearts. We know the, the boat's going to make it across the lake. <laughs> and it's a combination of wisdom, humility, patience, and perseverance. It's a vision for the best and a strategy to survive the worst. Okay? That, the, the difference in, in the kingdom is that we switch over from just doing what we're told to having the heart of the Father and, and out of the desire of our own heart, partnering with Him to see the kingdom built. It's an amazing place. I'm inviting you into it. God bless. Have a great week.